The brain remembers better when the number of senses, sense organs involved is higher. When you're looking at a textbook, there's only one sense involved. If you're looking and writing, you look, you've looked at it. You're looking at it while you're writing it. If you read it while you write it, you're also speaking it, you're saying it and you're listening to yourself saying it. So the number of senses that are involved is higher. More the number of senses involved, better is your chance of remembering it. Hello everyone, welcome to PW English YouTube channel. I'm Shalini Somshekar, your botany teacher and in this video, I'm going to give you a list of books that you must absolutely have with you in order to get a perfect score in neat botany. So let's get started. The first book I'm sure everybody already knows is the NCRT textbook. Now, everybody knows that most of the questions in biology, including both botany and zoology, are directly statements of NCRT, right? Everybody knows how important it is, but there is one confusion that I commonly see in students, which is which NCRT textbook to refer? Is it the old one or the new one? That depends on the chapter. If you take a look at the NMC updated syllabus for NEET 2025, you will see that you will need both old and new NCRT textbooks. So I would suggest that you have a copy of both old and new textbooks. For which chapters would you need the old textbook? The difference between the old and the new textbook, first of all, is that in the new textbook, some chapters have been deleted and in a couple of chapters, certain concepts have been deleted. So the new textbook is lighter in content compared to the old textbook, right? So um, for which chapters would you want to refer the old textbook is for chapters like the living world, morphology of flowering plants, anatomy of flowering plants, uh, in 11th grade and chapters like organisms and population in 12th grade. So why should you refer the old textbooks in this case? That is because according to the NEED syllabus, there are certain concepts that you can find only in the old textbook which have been deleted in the new textbook. Take living world for example. There is a concept called what is living which has been deleted in the new textbook. It is available only in the old textbook and it is part of your syllabus. If you take morphology of flowering plants, you have modifications of different part, plant parts like uh, leaf modification, stem modification, root modification, all of that has been deleted in your new textbook. It's available in the old textbook only and that is part of your neat syllabus. Talk about anatomy of flowering plants, you have uh, plant tissues that has been deleted in the new textbook but it's part of the old textbook only. Talk about organisms and populations. Over there, you have organism and its environment. A whole concept has been deleted in the new textbook, which is available only in the old textbook and it is part of your need syllabus. So for such chapters, it would be ideal if you can refer the old textbook because they are important concepts from which questions may be asked, right? And uh, in what cases would you refer the new textbook? See, for whatever chapters have been deleted totally in the new textbook, those chapters have been deleted from the uh, need syllabus as well. Okay, but in some chapters like respiration in plants, you see that no content has been deleted. The content in the old textbook and the new textbook is the same, but some information has been updated. Like how many protons does it take to make one molecule of ATP during uh, uh, ATP synthesis in the chapter respiration in plants? Some Updation has happened in the new textbook. In such cases, I would suggest you to refer to the new textbook and stay updated with the latest information. Only for chapters which is not available in the, only for concepts which is not available in the new textbook, I would suggest you to refer the old textbook. Okay, so that which textbook you refer to depends on which chapter you study. I hope that is, uh, that is clear, that conf confusion is clear. What is the second thing that you will need to maximize your score? in fact, to get a perfect score, is notes. Now, NCRT is um, in a lot of paragraphs and in NCRT, there are a lot of uh, nuanced uh, concepts. There are a lot of statements which are not easy to understand and you have many pathways and you have many, uh, you know, uh, steps that you need to remember in many concepts. So, if you're reading it in like a paragraph, paragraph, it becomes difficult for your brain to register it and remember it for a long time. What you can do instead is maintain a notes where you are 
having the same information that is there in ncrt instead of having paragraphs and paragraphs i would like you to make points make notes and points or in the form of flow charts or in the form of tables wherever there is comparison or uh, you know in the form of mind maps basically have that same information that is available to you in the form of paragraphs in a more structured form which you can understand and remember better okay so for quick revision you may make use of your notes next what is uh, yeah another book that i want you to maintain is a separate notebook like all of the concepts in one notebook you making notes right either in the form of mind maps uh, flow charts or points tables whatever apart from that i want you to maintain a separate notebook for specifics alone what do i mean by specifics specifics can mean exact numbers exact names exact dates those sort of things right so there are many specifics uh, in your ncert text uh, i'm sorry yeah in your ncert textbook uh, like the names of scientists which year did they perform their experiment in uh, those kind of things and uh, when you talk about uh, chapters like uh, morphology of flowering plants plant kingdom microbes in human welfare you have a lot of examples like scientific names that you will have to remember so if all of these names that require a lot of your attention and uh, uh, you know uh, memory if it is interspersed between your regular notes it will become difficult to remember so if you have specifics alone in a separate notebook you can revise it more frequently and by looking at it frequently it kind of registers in your brain better so while you're making notes only for the specifics what you can do is take one chapter at a time take one chapter in that chapter if there is any date or name of any scientist about their research work you can write down only the dates at first then you can write down only about the names of researchers and scientists what their contribution is next and then if there are any specific examples of living organisms your scientific name common name whatever it is you can make note of that like one chapter at a time even within the chapter you will split it into dates separately names of people separately names of organisms example separately all right and also draw diagrams or make a note of diagrams and it and its labels because many times you see that there are diagram based questions asked in the neat exam right so you should maintain a separate book for specifics what is the advantage of you making note of it separately i'll tell you see the brain remembers better when the number of senses sense organs involved is higher when you're looking at a textbook there's only one sense involved if you're looking and writing you look you've looked at it you're looking at it while you're writing it if you read it while you write it you're also speaking it you're saying it and you're listening to yourself saying it so the number of senses that are involved is higher more the number of senses involved better is your chance of remembering it right so whenever you make notes for specifics while you're writing it down say it aloud so that you can hear it yourself not say it in your head say it aloud so that your hearing sense is also involved and write it down so that in, you know makes the chances of you remembering it for a longer time better all right so yeah that's about the book for specifics and then we know that most of the questions in uh, the neat exam are directly statement statements from ncrt so you should have good books that will uh, that will have mcqs similar to how it is in neat exam like it should have fill in the blanks kind of questions it should have match the following kind of questions it should have statement based questions it should have assertion and reason kind of questions like which of the following statements is correct identify the incorrect statement all of these different kinds of questions true or false that you can generally find in the neat exam so you should have a good book which will give you mcqs of all different kinds from the latest syllabus all right so if you uh, if you see in the market there are many books available uh, you know which uh, gives you which say which claim that they are ncrt based only ncrt uh, related questions are there you buy it looking at the you know uh, title of the book and then you end up seeing that there are so many questions that are out of ncrt out of syllabus and then you end up wondering okay uh, do i not know this is it really part of the ncrt textbook or uh, you start doubting yourself right that shouldn't happen so buy books like i would suggest uh, you 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 could buy a textbook called ncrt punch ncrt punch biology 
that has been um, you know authored by dr vipin sharma uh, from pw so that is a wonderful book the advantage of this book is uh, you have both botany and zoology in the same book that is a brilliant investment for an eat aspirant because you have questions of every kind in that book and uh, you know um, it's easier for you to find a variety of questions from that one book alone in fact even the newly added concepts like the of uh, families angels from families in the chapter morphology of flowering plants you can qu find questions related to that as well so that is an excellent investment you could buy the book n c n c e r t punch biology i have personally purchased it and i know and i can vouch for its quality it's a brilliant book you will not be you know disappointed next all right so you have to practice whatever concepts you've studied you have to practice questions related to that concept every single day and while you're practicing those questions there are chances that you might answer some questions wrongly or even when you're taking tests there are chances that you will answer certain questions wrongly so whenever you answer a question wrongly you should make a note of why that question was answered incorrectly did you not know the concept did you not read the question correctly did you get confused did you not mark it correctly in the omr whatever is the issue whatever is the reason for that error you have to note it down in a book so that you know what are the errors that you frequently um, committing like is it are you losing marks mostly because you are attempting despite not knowing the answer are you losing marks because you're not reading properly reading it incorrectly and despite knowing because you read it incorrectly you've marked it incorrect or it could be because um, you know you're not bubbling it correctly whatever is your issue you will be able to identify it and work towards it better so it's important that you have a book you maintain a book to analyze your mistakes after each time you practice questions and after each time you take tests and finally a pyq's book which will give you an idea of what kind of questions are frequently asked from what concepts so in our classes in the yakeen neat english batch which is a batch uh, dedicated to toppers however even freshers can uh, uh, enroll in this batch we will be covering both 12th and uh, 11th grade syllabus in this batch we are going to go through every line of ncert we are going to cover every line of ncert and uh, you know um, break it down to students so that un they understand it very well after the class you are also going to get notes and we insist students to make a separate notes for specifics and send us pictures so that we know they have done it for sure and then after each lecture we give them practice questions that are based from ncert we call them daily practice problems and we also discuss pyqs in the class now when it comes to pyqs students generally ask which book should i buy for pyqs doesn't matter which publication it, it is all the pyqs and all the books will be the same pyqs you cannot change right they are all questions from previous year papers doesn't matter whichever uh, publication you can find the book it is good it is available in the pw app our own pw pyqs book is also available you could uh, go ahead and buy that as well so these are certain things that you should uh, consider if you want a perfect score in neat botany we are doing pretty much all of these points we are covering all of these points in our yakeen neat english batch uh, which is a batch targeted for top, uh, droppers the initial price of this batch was rupees 4800 but because right now we are running an independence day offer this is made available to you at just rupees 3299 and this offer is valid only till the 18th of this month till the 18th august so if you're somebody who needs uh, guidance who needs you know some teacher to show you direction if you're feeling hopeless and you do not know what to do you're feeling directionless then we can show you the direction uh, so you can consider purchasing our batch enrolling into our batch all right so i i can uh, assure you that you will not be disappointed we have good quality teachers for all subjects who are very approachable you can get your doubts clarified at any point in time so if you're still wondering whether you should enroll for a course whether you should self study this is not a huge investment nowhere in this country you can see an entire years batch offered at such a nominal price of 3299 so don't think twice enroll and i will see you in class hopefully this session helped thank you